In this video, I'm going to tell you about how to make easy airbrush stencils with Frisket film. So a lot of people buy an airbrush, partially because I say to people, hey, you should really buy an airbrush because they're great. Um, and a lot of people like myself started out by just using it for priming. Maybe you live in an area where rattle cans not very good. Spray cans don't work so hot because it's too hot, too cold, too humid, uh, not humid enough, uh, whatever. Lots of different options. And so maybe you don't have a garage or a place outside you can do it, whatever. Airbrush is great. You can prime things very easily. And when you start out, you prime. And then eventually you start moving into also base coating. I've primed my thing, whatever it is, person, warrior, vehicle, uh, black or white or gray or whatever color. And now I'm going to throw a color over it that's the base color. Um, it's an ultramarine, so I'm going to make them blue, whatever the deal is. And then you start to move into maybe zenithal highlighting or just specific pinpoint highlighting. Some people even go into detail. I've heard people tell me about how they even, even can, can airbrush eyes on Space Marines. I, I can't, Lord knows. Um, it sounds like a myth, but you know, I'm sure somebody can do it. But sometimes you want to get into something really interesting and have like a cool design that's very sharp and not kind of that sort of slightly blurry edge that airbrushing has. Well, if you want to do that, what happens is, as it turns out, you go into the world of art supplies. You will probably not find this stuff at your local gaming hobby store. You will probably find it at your local uh, art supply store. Or if you don't have a local art supply store, or if your art supply store doesn't carry it, they could order it, or you could order it, whatever. It's called Frisket Film. Frisket Film is not a brand name. It's just, this is made by... I can't even, but Graphics is the name of the company that makes this, and it's 9 by 12. And what Frisket Film is, is it is just a very thin, kind of clear, uh, plasticky, low-tack adhesive sticker on a backing, okay? So there's a couple different kinds. This kind's got the white backing. It's not quite as nice as the other stuff that's got the thicker, clear plastic backing, but it'll still work in a pinch. Well, actually, in most situations, it'll work. What you do with frisket film is you make yourself a stencil and then you attach it to, let's say, a vehicle or onto like a cloak or something like that. And then it allows you, because it sticks to the model a little bit, not too much, kind of like a post-it note, not like a masking tape, more like a, something that's repositionable. But you take that and you can spray, uh, you know, you cut a hole in it and you spray and then you can get a design onto, you know, whatever thing that you want to get it onto. So, for example, I was working on some rhinos for my Steel Legion um, Space Marines. And so I found this shape online and I printed it out and then later on cut a whole bunch of pieces of paper out of this piece of paper, but don't pay attention to that. It's just a little kind of Maltese cross that is the symbol of the Steel Cross faction, whatever. So I took that and then I took a piece of the, uh, you know, the frisket film and I laid it over it. Now with this being the white backing frisket film, it's a little hard to see here, but it's there. Um, and then you want to lay it down flat and take an X-Acto blade and you want to cut. Now the frisket film, the top layer with the adhesive is very thin and pretty delicate. The clear backing stuff is usually got a thicker clear backing, but, uh, and, and so your, your, your X-Acto blade as you're cutting doesn't cut through it as easily. This, because it's the thinner white stuff, which was cheaper when I bought it and it's all they had at the local hobby store, will work, but you have to be a little bit more careful so you don't cut through the backing. It doesn't, it's not the end of the world if you do. It's just a little bit inconvenient if you do. So again, you take your whatever shape you want to cut out, you lay it down there so you can see it through there, and then you cut and you make yourself your, um, your hole, your stencil that you're going to spray through. Then you want to take that piece that you've got. You want to separate it from the backing and now you want to stick that to the model so that you can spray through it. Now here's the issue though. If the model is very curved, like if it's just a simple turn like a tube, not so bad. Um, if we're talking about uh, an Imperial Knight shoulder pad where it curves both this way and 
you know what I mean? Like a shoulder pad. That's This stuff's not your end-all, be-all for making a good stencil to put on there because bending it one way is, is fine, but then also trying to bend it another way, you're going to get wrinkles, you're going to have problems. So this may not work super hot for something like that, specifically really, really intricate, like folded designs and all kinds of things like that. This plastic is very thin and it does stick pretty well, but... It might take you a really long time. You might rip it some. But, you know, if it's not too bad, definitely give it a try. Now, for vehicles and terrain, it works pretty spectacularly. So I was literally within a minute able to position this where I wanted on these two rhinos and then spray down my uh, silver on top of the blue on the, the, the hatches on the back so that I could very easily make a pretty intricate, you know, intricate in that it's very sharp and, and detailed kind of design. If I wanted to go fancier and then put in all kinds of bevels and do all kinds of stuff like that, I could keep making more stencils, laying them over the top, layering, doing all that stuff. But just a very simple, think of it almost like in the military, like in World War II, where they just put the white star on tanks a lot. They didn't get real fancy and filigree and all that kind of stuff. I just wanted a silver metallic star on the back of my, um, my transport, my Rhino, and it worked out great. And then what I did was I took um, some, some sponge and the same blue that I used for the thing. And I kind of dabbed at it so that I could make it look like some of the silver had been chipped off. Some of the silver paint had been chipped off due to, you know, combat or just day-to-day -day stuff, that kind of thing. And then also not spraying it super heavy in some spots. Cause I want to look like it's almost maybe worn away. All these easy, all these things are really easy to do when you have a, uh, like a tacky, you know, a uh, hole, a tacky, uh, you know, st stencil hole that will stay where you want it to go, but you can move it and reposition it as much as you want. All of that kind of stuff, pushing it all down with your thumbnail a little bit so that it's nice and sharp, really makes it easy to get designs painted onto vehicles and terrain. The other thing that's great, as you'll notice here, I didn't have to cut two stencils to make this happen. They're repositionable. You can use it over and over again, not forever, but you can use it and then use it on maybe several vehicles. Or if you were working on terrain, um, here's some um, uh, dead zone terrain. And I wanted just a simple stripe that I could use over and over again on a bunch of different pieces of that terrain. And I just made myself a very simple little straight thing and just would lay it over there, spray a bit, move it onto the next piece, spray a bit. It's really simple to use. And like I said, it won't last forever, but it's also pretty inexpensive. And then you just buy more sheets, cut some more, cut some more shapes and, and go to town. All these little things, there's a lot of little things that you can find at the art store that can help you in your kind of hobby uh, painting stuff. And this frisket film is one that I did not realize that a lot of people hadn't heard of. I mean, there's a lot of people who have as well, but I just, I was at the Las Vegas Open last weekend and I had a conversation with some people and I said, oh, well, you should use frisket film for that. And then, and then there was a kind of a, a, a silence and, a, and, a, and a, a quizzical look. And so I thought I should make a video and talk about this kind of thing. If you do stencils and stuff like that, why don't you leave that in the comment below and let me know what other kind of things you use when trying to make airbrush stencils onto cool vehicles and other kinds of terrain and designs like that.